Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Todd from All Music, and I've got a really special guest here today, Shane Alexander. Everybody say hi to Shane. How you doing, Shane? Great, buddy. All right, nice to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, how you been? Uh, all things considered, we were doing really well. Good. Uh, you know, we're safe at home. We're locked in. We've been we've been pretty well behaved in terms of the lockdown goes. Um, and my daughter had a friend stay over last night, which was the first time in eight weeks. Uh, so we're living crazy these last 24 hours. But other than that, we've <laughs> really locked in. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the way it's been going for everybody. Hopefully yep. we're going to see an end into that coming soon. Hopefully so. Hopefully uh, all best case scenarios line up from here on out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to say, uh, I've been listening to your albums over the years. I sure do like them a lot. And uh, I, I actually just listened to... Uh, a life like ours today and that was fantastic thanks, thanks that was really good good job on that thank you and uh you know what i i liked i liked the whole thing really great but what was a surprise was a uh knights of white satin yep that was that was a really good job on that i've never heard anybody do that song as well thanks. yeah thanks. yeah we do that one live and it always goes over really well and i just thought what the hell might as well put it on the record super good yeah yeah good job on that thanks yeah well you you've got a lot of albums out now <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was I, checking I, out your spotify and and you've got quite a number there like and then a lot of other uh things you've participated in yeah uh i've got i guess seven solo albums and an EP. And then I had a side project called The Greater Good, um, did a record in Germany. And, um, and then just lots of co-writes over the years for various other artists and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you've been, uh, you've been busy for a number of years. I like the uh, instrumentation in a, a life like ours. Um, I heard some uh, sound like pedal steel possibly. Yeah, that's Jesse Siebenberg. Okay, yeah, I, f yeah. I thought maybe it might've been. He's fantastic. He's wonderful. Yeah. Well, here's a question that came to my mind when I was listening to your album. And this is, I'm, I don't mean to like, you know, I just think I'm just, I, I want to, how would you describe that style of music? Um, I mean, do you have, I mean, it's such a stupid question. Like, how can I pigeonhole you? Is there any way I can do that? You, uh, know? I, you know, I'd rather you didn't. Um, I know, I know. It's it's awesome. I love it. And yeah, you know, I, it's got a lot I, of different I, feels to it. You know, it really does. Yeah, you know. But it's, but it's very coherent. Sorry, go ahead. Well, well, hopefully so. I mean, folk and rock are two words that always come to play. Sure. Um, so folk rock is just sort of, a, I guess, a simple room to put me in. But, you know, a lot of my favorite artists like John Lennon or David Bowie, you know, they they were really free, free to explore the space. Yeah. And, and uh, from record to record, I feel like I've definitely gone into some strange places that aren't necessarily just folk or rock. But for sure, um, you know, hopefully the song just tells me where it wants to go. And, and I don't really have too many preconceived notions of, you know, usually my guitar and my vocal are at the center of things. And beyond that, uh, from a production standpoint, uh, hopefully the songs kind of tell me where they want to go. And we go, we take them uh, to the right places. Yeah. Are you working on new music now? Um... Yeah, I am. Right now, I was actually supposed to be producing a couple of artists um, this spring. I had two records back to back. Um, so uh, with that on the back burner, I, I've been, I've been writing and, uh, I like, I record myself every night, like just to kind of stay a little sharp. I just, I've just been like performing and letting tape roll. Um, but I have a single that's done uh, and mixed that I'm just waiting for my engineer to get to me. I've been waiting for seven weeks or whatever, because he's been locked down and couldn't go to the studio. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got a single that's a duet with Justine Bennett. We did a cover of Jeff Buckley's uh, Last Goodbye. Ooh, nice. Um, as a duet, and it came out really nice. And um, so that'll be coming soon. And then also I did another cover. Uh, I did a song by The Smiths called Asleep. And um, I'm going to put that out too. And uh, I'm moving towards another record. Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but uh, I was kind of tallying up what, I, what songs I thought were good to go last night. And uh, we're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to making a record, is it just kind of an organic thing? It kind of falls together or, or start the plan starts to develop over time or? 
Yeah, it, it starts to kind of crystallize. Uh, songs that you discount might come back, or songs that you were really passionate about might not fit with the group. And uh, and it's just about having a group that all kind of wants to be on the same record. And, um, you, you know, of course, in the modern world, I've thought about putting out singles exclusively. But like I said, I'm going to put out a couple of singles. But I, I still like the full album as an art form and as a document. And so I'll probably continue to make those. I'll put out some singles here and there for sure. Um, but as far as versus an EP or something like that, I think I'd probably rather roll them into a full record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I know you probably you have you haven't been out playing lately, obviously. But uh, yeah, before all this kind of happened, uh, where where have you been? What have you been doing as far as live performance? Well, uh, I guess in the last quarter before all this happened, I'd been to Europe. Uh, I, I think I went twice this last year to Germany and Holland and Switzerland, and um, tour a little bit. I, I haven't been to the East Coast for a few years. Um, I guess. No, that's not true. I, I guess a little over a year I was I was East Coast, um, but I was also in Texas. I, I played in Houston. There's a really great room down there that's kind of like a premier singer songwriter room called the Mucky Duck, and uh, I've played that uh, each each year. And just like that show's nice enough that I just fly in and out for that one. And uh, when all this happened, I was supposed to be doing a, a run in the Pacific Northwest uh, in April. And also, I was supposed to go to Arizona in April, and so basically everything just stopped, just stopped. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird how that happened, and a lot of people are um, that I've noticed are taking to the internet to still, you know, I think be creative and also to, I think relieve people's boredom as well, like entertainers and musicians, especially. I see a lot of people performing. Sure. You know, over Facebook or just different live events, even on television, there's been yep. a couple of concerts. Um, and you know, that's interesting. It's kind of a new, uh, this whole zoom thing is kind of a new type of thing. People are really catching on to and, and sharing and, uh, collaborating too. I've been really shocked at some of the collaborations over the internet. You'd think there'd be lag and stuff like that, but it just comes together so well. It's amazing. Yeah. A lot of those are working really well. I haven't done any uh, online collaborations yet. Like I've done some uh, online like co-writing and things like that, but we haven't tracked yet. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure that'll be coming next. I'm really missing my band. I've been sending texts to the guys and, you know, we were sounding really, really good right when this uh, all happened and want to get us back to where we were. And uh, yeah, I, the virtual thing I, I've done now, probably six live online concerts and, um, yeah, it's it's a new it's the new frontier, and it's not the same, but it it's, no. it, it has its charms, and and it does really feel great to connect with people, especially people really far away, and um, you know, I I have a lot of friends and fans in Europe, and like trying to time it where they can see it. Obviously, they can pick it up if it re-airs the following day, but it's it's there's something about the guys that you know that are watching it in real time and commenting back and forth that really makes it special. And um, so, yeah, I, I've done a couple of benefits and, and a couple of those. I've got another, uh, I'm going to do something, I think, Tuesday on uh, Instagram with Natalie Gelman. And then I think the week of the 20th, I can check, uh, I'm doing something for El Gonzo, which is this wonderful, uh, yeah, the 20th, um, it's this wonderful artist hotel in uh, San Jose del Cabo, down in Mexico. And um, I played down there and recorded a video and did a concert uh, on the roof. It's a beautiful, beautiful, special place. And that whole area is really, really suffering from Corona. Uh, just, you know, so many people are, are in the tourism business. And that's kind of what's keeping them alive. And so I'm happily doing a benefit for them on the 20th. Very cool. So, yeah, it feels good to help, uh, you know, everybody's everybody's tightening their belts right now. And uh, all we can do is kind of hunker down and make music and move forward and see what that looks like. Because we still don't know. No, no, you don't. Um, so when you do like a, a virtual type concert, um, is it, I mean, it seems like it would, I would enjoy doing something like that for myself, but it also you kind of mentioned how you enjoyed sort of connecting with, you know, the fans or the, the viewers too. So it's kind of a, 
a mutual thing. What, what do you, what do you get out of it for yourself? Um, obviously you get to sort of flex your performer muscles, which, you know, you want, you don't want to lose the, your chops as it were. Um, right. so I, I like to be performing and, and hopefully people are, are moved. I mean, right now it's, it's pretty densely populated with people and guitars online doing their thing. Um, I'm not doing it too often once a week or something like that, but, um, it feels really good to be staying connected and also to be trying out some new material and, you know, trying to remember some old material. And uh, yeah, it's as close to the live experiences we're going to get for a, a while. So it's, it's pretty great. And usually when it ends, I, I always wish it's, I think it's too soon and I, I wish that I could go on longer yeah. um, just cause I don't want it to stop. But I, you know, I think it's better to leave them wanting than leave them wanting you to leave. Yeah. What do you do? Um, when you go out to music, do you go out to like a, like local events or and bands or, or people that you know, or do you go to, let's say like um, big stadiums and things like that? What do you prefer as far as when you go out to see some music? You know, I, I, I love it all. I, yeah. I love it all. I love the experience of going to a big concert and you know, like the Santa Barbara Bowl or the Greek or whatever. Yeah, those are great venues. Really special. And uh, we saw the Head in the Heart last summer at, at the Santa Barbara. I hadn't been there for some years. Um, but, you know, that said, I like really intimate shows too. And there's been a million really small shows that I've been so moved. You know, I, I, I feel really blessed to be in the room. Uh, yeah. I, I remember just recently in the last whatever, maybe four or five months, I was at the Hotel Cafe in the small room and my friends sweet talk radio were playing and they were so damn good i just thought oh i'm so, i'm so grateful to be where i am right at this moment to be catching this performance and uh, you know it's just inspiring to see music and there there's a there's a lot of great stuff there's a lot of crappy stuff but i don't go see the crappy stuff yeah yeah, yeah i've been to hotel uh cafe a couple of times my son played there on drums with skin and bones one time and then another time he played uh, I think it was his own his own show. He was playing guitar and leading his band, and that was that's a cool venue there. Uh, I yeah, love it. it's two venues. There, there's the yeah. stage one and stage two, and and yeah. both have got their charms. I've done both rooms a bunch, and um, yeah, it's just sort of like a clubhouse, and so many friends are always there, and just the you know they keep the talent pretty high. Yeah, really, really. I think there's another one that I used to go to quite a bit. I'm trying to remember. If it was uh, Largo, I think it was. Yeah, Largo was super special. Yeah, um, it's there, there's still another arc. There's a different incarnation of it now. That's a theater on La Cienega. Okay. Um, yeah, but at the, at the Coronet Theater, it's called Largo at the Coronet now. Okay. But yeah, Largo was a really special room. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it, it sort of ushered in the singer songwriter movement. It was before the hotel, for it was. sure. Yeah, and, it was. And, uh, Flanagan, the guy who owned and ran the place, was sort of like the soup Nazi for singer songwriters. So like, even though they served food in there, if anybody was talking, like he would want to kick them out. Yeah, like, he would definitely a listening, listening room. Yeah, yeah. For sure, yeah. Yeah, I got to play there a few times too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw quite a few people there, just super special, intimate shows, yeah. Yeah. I've seen you perform a number of times here in, uh, in the area where I live in Ventura. I think Zoe's for one. Uh, sure. I think I've seen you at the Deer Lodge before, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely have done the Deer Lodge a bunch. But I'm talking about quite a, oh, quite a while ago. Yeah, we still play it now. Um, but yeah, the Deer Lodge has been one of our main haunts for years. And also in Ventura, there was the lodge. Is that the lodge you're talking about? Or are you talking about the Deer Lodge in Ojai? Oh, I was talking about the Deer Lodge in Ojai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. There was a place called the Lodge that was in Ventura that uh, Steve and Polly from Zoe's put concerts on there too which was like a big old hall that was that was a really nice room too mm -hmm. that was up the main drag in ventura yeah i don't remember the name of the lodge i of course i remember zoe's of course um not i'm not really sure uh that was that after zoe's or uh no it was it was kind of in the middle between zoe's one and two i think oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A lot of good music came through there uh, over the years. I used to go there quite a bit. It was a yeah. cool listening room, too. It, it was really special. Steve and Polly are like family. 
Yeah. And, and we've had a million good nights together over the mm -hmm. years, for sure. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Hey, um, I've got your uh, Spotify pulled up. Yeah. Are you interested in uh, maybe uh, showcasing a song or anything like that while we're here? Or um, would you oh, rather- Oh, you mean from Spotify? Oh, uh, yeah. sure. Or um, you could do one live if you want. Oh, uh, either one. Uh, um, Just depends on your mood, how you feel, you know? Yeah. Um, what, what are you thinking on Spotify? What, what would your choice be? Well, I really like the, the new album, uh, here, let me pull up my screen and you can take a look at it. So, uh, there you go. Can you see that? Yep. There he is. Yeah. Um, life like ours. That's a good album too. Ladera. Ladera. Yeah. I remember when I got that, when you, when that came out, I still have a CD copy of it somewhere. I think. Great. I just don't keep track of my CDs as much as I used to though. Yeah. Well, who does? Yeah. Who does? Uh, I used to have a, ma a massive CD collection and I, yeah. over the years I kind of sold it off and now I'm a little bit sad just because I'm a collector of things and I'd like to have it with me still. And I still feel that way about my LPs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Long we're, gone. We're, we're hoarding LPs for the long haul, but um, most of those I've given to my daughter. Like that's where the record collection of the house lives just yeah. to give her the important food groups. Um, click on a life like ours, if you would, and, and, yeah. and uh, I'll see if I can find a song. Uh, I like Riverbed a lot. That was cool. Yeah, Riverbed, a toe tapper. Yeah. Um, uh, sure, you want to do Riverbed? That's fine. Well, do you have something you'd rather hear? Uh, I'm super easy. Uh, it's yeah. my own stuff. Um, put on Slow Goodbye. Slow goodbye. All right, let's play that. And then uh, we'll listen to it. And then we'll get back to we'll, we'll just kind of keep it how it is. And then we'll we'll get back. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more. Okay. All right. So this is Shane Alexander. Slow goodbye. Slow goodbyes are hard to see. They move before your eyes. It takes so long before you realize. Try so very hard to make the days all come alive They keep coming at you faster all the time Can we wait a little longer? Must the day turn into night? Not ready to surrender, but I'm far too tired Stars are coming through the window down the hall Can't deny the music when it starts to call Try so very hard to face the feelings that arise They keep coming at you faster all the time
Really great, nice. Shane. I think you, uh, let's see, uh, pick that one for me because you know I like the uh, pedal steel. Oops, let's see, just now. Yeah, that's Jesse on steel and this Wurlitzer right next to me. Can you hear the music that's playing right now? No. I, uh, I accidentally started it the next song. There we go. Okay. okay. I'm back on. Um, yeah, that was fantastic. I really, like I said, I really love that pedal steel. Was that the pedal steel or? Um, I'm trying to remember on that song if that was pedal or lap steel. It's yeah. definitely one or the other. Super he awesome. he has sort of a lap steel hybrid the, uh, that has a couple of bender bars. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of lives somewhere between steel and pedal. And uh, we favor that one quite a bit. Yeah, I've seen him play a few times too. And I, I've seen him play that. One time he was playing that pedal steel and he was, you know, saying like, I'm not very good at it. And it was, it was just like, so great, you know, so great. He's one of the most accomplished musicians I've ever met. And I know oh. a lot of musicians. Uh, oh, he's, yeah. He's just dynamite. And, and there's, he can pick up anybody's job in the band and, and be amazing. Jesse Siebenberg. Uh, yeah, Jesse Siebenberg. Yep, yep. Yeah, I've seen him play and many times in different configurations and, and many times all different instruments, you know? Yeah, yeah. One time I saw him play this baritone guitar. And it was just like the most amazing thing I ever seen. Yeah, he's yeah. just really musical. And, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's first and foremost, he's an amazing drummer, which he is. is surprising to most people because they've seen him playing with bands you know, as a steel player or a guitar player, but he's an amazing drummer and uh, and an amazing singer too. He's just, yeah. he's extremely gifted. I think the first time I ever seen him was at Zoe's and he was playing the drums. And yeah. it's always, uh, it's always surprising to me when you see uh, multi-instrumentalists, you know, and how proficient they are in so yeah. many different uh, instruments. It's crazy, you know, uh, how people can just have a, aptitude to to learn all that and be so good at it you've yeah. always surrounded yourself with great musicians you know on on par with yourself you know and it's i, I try to be the worst guy in the room uh, that, that's always, <laughs> i always am the worst guy in the room <laughs> no, that's always the plan is to just yeah. surround myself with amazing guys that are kind of limitless and that's again what, where the songs can really go into a million different directions yeah you know if you got a drummer who can be a little more jazzy or a reggae feel or whatever, just what, whatever the, the lyric is, you know, making us feel like. And uh, so it's just, I worked with Billy Moeller for many years, who's an, another amazing artist and he produced three or four of my records and, and uh, he played drums and bass and guitar on a lot of things that I did. And uh, yeah, I've been blessed to play with a lot of great people. I, I have a pretty high standard and uh, I've been blessed to, to play with many of LA's best. Sure. Well, you've been doing it quite a long time. You've really made a name for yourself. Yeah, and I, every piece of work that I've heard has been top notch. I mean, just from, Thanks. you know, from the production to the musicianship, you know, the, the song crafting, it, you know, it's always been just really great. And your live performance as well, you know. Well, thank you. That's yeah, nice definitely. to hear. What do you, um, love? what's on your like listening list right now? What kind of music do you listen to or, or what kind of like shaped your, your musical interests, you know, even growing. I've seen some pictures of you when you were younger and you had, so, you had long hair and uh, oh, sure. like, was, as we all did, you know? Yeah, yeah, I was a metal head for sure. Um, yeah. I started out with like important music like the Beatles and Simon and Garfunkel and Cat Stevens and Fleetwood Mac. And I had all the important food groups as a kid. Sure. And, uh, and then in my teens, I got heavy into metal and uh, I, I played electric guitar exclusively for a, a good probably 10 years or something. And, um, and then I went to music school and, uh, and then just uh, I saw Neil Young play at the Greek Theater mm. when I was in full metal mode still. And it really changed the way I looked at everything. And um, just he was solo acoustic and it was just it was it was really really kind of pivotal for me and and so uh, you know I was in rock bands throughout my twenties, and then uh, in my early thirties I started uh, to go solo, and um, and so uh, you know I kind of got back to the singer songwriter roots and other artists like Elliot Smith, and Grantley Phillips the the band Grantley Buffalo. Oh, I love Grantley Phillips. Yeah yeah and Grantley Buffalo was uh, like Largo uh, Grantley Buffalo. I really thought helped sort of bridge the post-grunge 
into the singer songwriter movement, you know, mm. and, uh, when I first started solo, um, there were a couple of things, uh, just like in terms of falsettos I was using and stuff like that, that were definitely inspired by Grant. And, uh, and also I have a song called feels like the end. And I played my guitar solo on an elect on an acoustic guitar through an electric rig which was like a tip of the cap to Grant Lee Buffalo too, because he did a lot of that. Like his, his main show was a, a few Fender amps and like a Takamini 12 string acoustic, you know, and so he'd make a real racket with that. And so I, I just thought that was like a nice sort of surprising presentation. Um, so you could play an acoustic set and then w with the band or whatever, and then kind of have another gear to go through some pedals and distortion and echo and stuff like that and take the acoustic to that place. So, um, yeah, those were some bands that influenced me, but, um, what are you listening to now? Um, let me pull up my Spotify and see what I'm listening to. Um, uh, I, I've been a big fan of Ron Sexsmith, who's a Canadian singer songwriter. Um, I've been listening to Bruce Springsteen's uh, Western stars record, which I think is just a masterpiece. And that's a really big inspiration too, you know, at this point in his life for him to still be making masterpieces, you know, uh, there, there's a reason that he is the boss. He's just absolutely wonderful. There's a, a record called Case Lang Veers that I play quite a bit. That's Nico Case, Katie Lang, and I think Laura Veers. Uh, that's a beautiful kind of uh, super group record that's really, really great. Um, Things like uh, Ram from Paul McCartney, I'll still reach for that one from time to time. Mm -hmm. I still listen to Black Sabbath. I listen to like Fleet Foxes and Ryan Adams and First Aid Kit. And um, my uh, son played uh, at the Santa Barbara Bowl. He played drums with a, a band out of Santa Barbara. And uh, uh, oh no, it wasn't. Yeah, it, I think it was First Aid Kit was sort of the headliner. Oh great! Yeah, and uh, there was a yeah, they're, heap, they're wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, so you got quite a, uh, you know, quite an eclectic taste in music. Oh, for sure. Well, okay, let me ask you this. So, wait, what'd you, who'd you say? What was the metal? D, uh, Deep Purple, is that what you said? Uh, I, I love Deep Purple too, but Black Sabbath. Oh, Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah, yeah, Black Sabbath is, is definitely sort of been a constant in my life. Which version? Um, the earliest version. Uh, I, I still love like the Mob Rules and a few things that Dio did. Yeah. Um, but the first incarnation, uh, the first whatever four or five records, I, I just yeah. think just magical, yeah. and and uh, still really hold up. Uh, nothing really rocks harder than the Paranoid album. Yeah. Um, it, it's just got such a spirit to it, and the tones are so fat. And again, I, they knocked that record out in a day or two or something. Yeah, it's amazing how they work back then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I listened to that recently too. And, and you forget, you know, you, you see Ozzy, you know, kind of how he is now as an old man. Then, then you watch a video of him when he was a young man, he was, you know, just that voice and he could really hit some high notes and just yeah. rocked it on stage. He was so yeah. like, yeah, such a great performer. Yeah. I can get, go down the rabbit hole on YouTube of watching black Sabbath videos, uh, live yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a number of them like from the us festival is amazing. Amazing. That was, that was like children of the grave live at the us festival is just like a horde of Vikings. Like they're just so heavy. It's so great. Um, but yeah, uh, Ozzy was really special and, 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 you know, the, the, the stuff rocked and it was heavy and it was dark, but also like they were really cool songs that it was neat writing. Yeah. And, and they, they would throw in a ballad here or there that the, the ballads were, were great, you know, and um, it was great. It was a Charles Bradley did his cover of changes, you know, such a great, great song. Both versions are, are wonderful. And uh, I, I always love Planet Caravan. That's one of my favorite songs in my life. It's, it's been on every mixtape or whatever. When I'm traveling, I always have Planet Caravan close by. It's just, psychedelic and groovy and just super special yeah that's it's kind of like comfort food you know you, yeah. you, go, you go back to your favorites and uh sometimes you just want to have that you know just have that macaroni and cheese <laughs> yeah good stuff well listen i don't want to keep you too long i really appreciate you jumping on with me shane let's um yep. what do you say we play one more song i'll let you go Sure. And, and then I'll go ahead and let it play out. Um, that way I don't keep you listening to the same song you listened to a bunch of times already. But um, what song uh, 
do you think you'd like to uh, share with everybody? Um, I guess if you're on Spotify, put on Skyway Drive-In. That's been the song that's reached the furthest. So we'll get that song out there in the world and keep it going. Okay. Now thought, that, that oh, would... That's, you know, go back a page. Uh-huh. And then uh, there it is right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at those views or those listens. That's incredible. It's been a gift. It's, uh, I'm very, very grateful for it. And uh, hopefully they keep coming. Yeah, that's every, super awesome. Every day I say thank you and more, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, I'm going to um, just stop sharing that for a second so we can just say goodbye. But okay. thank you so much, Shane. Is there uh, anything that you want to say or uh, you want to promote before we go? Um, um, just follow along on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'll be doing more live streams in the weeks to come. Um, like I said, the next, my next main one is the 20th, uh, uh at, I think five o'clock, uh, for El Gonzo. And that'll be through my music page, which is Shane Alexander music on Facebook. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I've got a few singles coming and a few other projects coming, but other than that, just keep in touch. I'm easy to find. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you want to send me some links, uh, through messenger or whatever, I can put those in the description so people can just kind of click and go if they come across this video. Cool. All right. Well, thank Thanks, you. Man. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for just taking a minute and uh, sort of indulging the channel here and uh, sure. hope we get some views and um, we'll be uh, hoping to get back out there and get some live music going and love yeah. to see you in person one of these days soon. Yep. Hopefully so. Well, thanks again, Shan. I appreciate it. You All have right. a great day. Bye Peace bye. to you. Bye-bye. Okay, great. So that was Shane Alexander. We want to thank him very much. Hey, if you like this uh, content and uh, be super awesome if you could like the video and uh, consider subscribing to the channel as well. I uh, really appreciate the subscriptions. Click the notification bell so you can be notified when I have new interviews coming up. And uh, that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and play... Uh, Look at how many songs are on this. It's a, absolutely amazing. Let me make sure I got this right. Let's share the screen. There we go. Yeah. We almost did it. Did it again. Yeah, let's go ahead and play Shane Alexander's song, Skyway Drive, uh, Skyway Drive In. Here it is. Skyway driving by your grandma's house Used to be all they talked about It's been gone such a long time now Whatever happened to Tanglewood Where our first dance made us feel so good Aching my chest when I saw you in your dress Small town in our bloodstreams, wild horses in our hearts. It hurts like hell when first love falls apart. Your father gave his life to Armco Steel. He'd take his rifle out in Nelson's field. Sometimes I wonder if he's out there still. Small town in his bloodstream, wild horses in his heart. He never liked me much right from the start. got to goddamn cold they come around make me feel so old just 15 with an ancient soul mm -hmm. I always wanted so much else from life that I west find a west coast wife I did 
that time we had small town strife Late at night I still see those faces No matter how much the time erases I'm going back, gonna see those places again I've got small town in my bloodstream Wild horses in my heart And no one knows you like those from your start If you've got small town in your bloodstream Then you know it's all the truth Shane Alexander's Skyway Drive-In. Super cool, super cool song. Hey, that's going to uh, be about it today. Um, like I said, if you enjoy this, you know, like and subscribe and share. Also, um, there's another, there's a couple of other ways if you're interested in uh, helping this channel out and helping me grow this channel to something I can sustain on a, a regular basis. Um, there's a couple of things you can do there's a there's a coffee link there if you want to purchase some coffee uh, you get a steep discount there on that coffee and also it helps the channel out a little bit and also uh, consider joining my patreon uh, uh, page too I have a lot of other things that I put in the patreon page uh, such as a uh, um, sort of a I, I do uh, music reviews and my top favorite songs and of certain years. I've already done my top six favorite songs of 1970 and uh, actually my top favorite albums of 1970 and my top favorite albums of 1971. I'm getting ready to do 1972 and I'm gonna be doing a lot of different things like that as well. So consider um, joining the Patreon page. There's also a, a donation button for um, PayPal too, if you're so inclined, not a big deal. We got YouTube here. It's free for everybody. But if you like and subscribe and share and, and all that, that really helps too. So that would be super awesome. So hey, I just want to thank you all for watching this interview with Shane Alexander and what a, a magnificent talent he is. Um, all right. So uh, hey, we're going to catch you next time. I've got uh, more interviews coming up scheduled. I got a full plate of interviews tomorrow and we will see you guys soon. Bye bye. Thank you.